Just going to give you a quick look at the uh, arcade cabinet and where I'm at with it right now. It's the first time I've done a video actually uh, for a very long time. So let's have a quick look. Um, well, it's based on Robotron. Um, it's an homage to that particular machine. It isn't intended to be an exact copy. As you can see, I've got multiple buttons, uh, the twin sticks. Those will work on Robotron just fine. Uh, player select up here. The front panel here has credit buttons. So I didn't use uh, coin slots. You just press the button to get a credit. These are illuminated. Uh, the, the, lap, the door does open, um, they're not wired up yet, as you can see, that's another another job to do. Um, so if we go and have a look around the side, the side art um, I'm very, very pleased with. It's vinyl, um, but it just looks fantastic. Let me see if I can get a better view. So the back here is painted and the vinyl stripes, obviously all of it was one piece. Um, very, very, very easy to attach in actual fact and set up. So round the back, let's have a look. Um, just a handle here to help move it. I've got a USB port here to plug in um, keyboards uh, when setting up uh, the Raspberry Pi because it's going to be using a Raspberry Pi inside. A couple of vents for um, looks really. Uh, the Pi doesn't generate a lot of heat as I'm sure you appreciate. Down here, got an illuminated on off switch currently in the off position but it illuminates to show you that power is available there. Um, just carry on around. So I use metal uh, strips here and down here so that if when moving it you don't chip the um, the wood at the base there as you move it around. T moulding all around the sides, a little bit difficult to see uh, but not too bad. Now the control panel is as I say non-standard. All the artwork um, I found online or in the case of the control panel here I, I made myself. Um, the artwork on the side was done by a friend at the office, um, Jeremy Baines, excellent, excellent uh, artist and uh, graphic UX designer. Uh, right, so let's just switch it on. You can see where I'm at if we go back around here. So if we switch this on first, and now I've actually got a toggle switch hidden under the front, which is not going to be possible to see, I don't think. But if I just reach under here, can you see where I am? Flip that on. And then if we go back up, so the mo monitor's all wired up and ready. The Pi isn't set up yet. The control panel isn't finished wiring. I need to finish wiring these buttons and these so that they illuminate correctly. But yes, the illumination is quite interesting because if you see the way it's casting multicolored light through the perspex here, that was unexpected and I think I quite like it. It looks quite nice. I didn't I struggled with the idea of it being um, illuminated buttons because I've seen so many machines. You don't often see arcade machines with illuminated buttons, and I've seen so many home uh, machines that do have that, and they look, they can look a little bit odd, a little bit unrealistic, if you see what I mean. Um, the marquee is illuminated as well. It works really, really nicely. Again, I've used metal strips here, uh, top and bottom, just to hold that in place. Uh, unlike my first, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but the speakers here and here just inside above the screen, which is a traditional location uh, on arcade machines generally. Uh, and if we're going to have a quick look in the back, so the back opens like this and it just lifts out. Oh, it's quite heavy for one hand. Now inside here, no matter how many zip ties you use, you always end up with a rat's nest, it's it's almost impossible. So when I dismantled the monitor, I took the controls from the front and what just stuck them around the back here. So that's all permanently powered on. Um, you got the, the VGA out here, power for the monitor. Uh, the control panel's all wired up. A little bit dark in here, it's difficult to see, but it's all wired up. Uh, other than the buttons that I mentioned, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is. Um, USB audio adapter because you get far better sound via USB than you do using the Pi's own headphone socket. Do not bother using the Pi's headphone socket, it's absolutely garbage. Um, so, I strongly advise buying one of these. They're only a few pounds off eBay, they ship from um, China. This is a big base unit for some Philips uh, 5.1 speakers. I'm only using two of the speakers as I showed you up at the top of the cab. Uh, power supply for that. Power supply for the um, LED lights behind the marquees here. 
Um, and at the back there, you can just see where my finger's pointing. That's the toggle switch that hides under the front. Um, powered USB, so this these cables go to the controls here. More tidying needs to be done, but um, they go to those. I've used a powered USB because it's take drawing power for the uh, LED lights on the buttons, and I wasn't sure whether the Pi would appreciate that. This is a, an interesting touch here. So over at the back there, that is a on-off switch, which is always going to be on for the audio, and a volume knob. Now, one thing I had with the previous machine I built was it was a permanently set at a certain volume, and that can be upsetting at night time if people are trying to sleep. So you just open the front panel there, reach in, and flip that round. So it allows you to get to that without coming around the back of the machine. The machine is heavy. It's 18mm uh, MDF all round uh, with this battening here. And there's about 16 tonnes of paint on it because that was one of the hardest things I've ever done was trying to spray paint this. Um, sides are actually rollered. Can't quite get the texture on that. Need better lighting. It's too, too late at night, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, this is actually rollered on. Uh, it's a very light grey. Um, good friend off the internet, also an arcade machine builder, Neil. He, uh, he's building something like this as well. And he's, he's obviously going to turn out uh, superb when he's finished it. But he, he recommended or took the approach of using a roller. And that's does indeed work very, very well. Uh, so that's basically it. These are very cheap um, zip sticks. They're micro switched, you can hear, very clicky. These are not micro switched, listen. No clicks. These micro switched, these micro switched. Uh, but yeah, that's a quick tour around the machine. Um, I'll do another video when the, the thing is actually all set up and working, uh, perhaps with one of my sons having a play, so you can see how it how it sounds and what it looks like on the screen. But overall, very happy with how it's turned out so far. I'm like a few hours away from finishing this. Just need some wires, a bit more time to do the wiring, and we're all done. Thanks for looking, guys. See you.